While being branded as the world's factory given its huge marketing and export base, China surges us with the impression that it is independent from the rest of the world. Using this point, we were able to come up with our own way of manifesting Thomas Friedman's Lexus in Olive Tree and their corresponding correlation. We limited our focus, however, to the world of internet and how its censorship in China, or commonly referred to as the Great Firewall, affects the world and resonates with the cultural and economic growth of the nation. The triad of concepts presents the relationship between the global Lexus with China's balanced olive tree and self-sustaining Lexus. The Great Firewall of China has been accompanied by the olive tree ignoring the global Lexus. Internet censorship in China has been called a panopticon that encourages self-censorship to the perceptions that users are being watched. The Chinese government asserts that it has the legal right to control the Internet's content within their territory and their censorship rules do not infringe on their citizens' right to free speech. Since Xi Jinping became the General Secretary of the Chinese Communist Party in 2012, censorship has been significantly stepped up. The enforcement of censorship creates a chilling effect where individuals and businesses willingly censor their own communication to avoid legal and economic repercussions. Fines and short arrests are becoming an optional punishment to whoever spreads undesirable information to the different internet formats as this is seen as a risk to social stability. The government is far more concerned about what its citizens read in Chinese than in English, so censorship efforts are mostly concentrated on Chinese content which is the vast majority of content in Chinese cyberspace. According to a Harvard study, at least 18,000 websites were blocked from within mainland China in 2002, including 12 out of the top 100 global websites. The Chinese-sponsored news agency Xinhua stated that censorship targets only superstitious, pornographic, violence-related, gambling, and other harmful information. These are questionable, as the email provider Gmail is blocked and it cannot be said to fall into any of these categories. Besides the political agenda, the Great Firewall of China also served an economic purpose. By deterring foreign enterprises, China was able to protect and nurture domestic companies by having the whole pie to themselves. This was one of the reasons for the rise of the Chinese giants such as Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent, or B8. Foreign expanding to China would have to abide to domestic regulation including what or what not to post on the internet. The government censors content for many political reasons but also to maintain control over the populace. Although rising, the Chinese Lexus, however, has an indirect effect on the global Lexus. In Friedman's term, we can say that trumping is being done. We summarized it in the three, namely global compliance, user surveillance, and restricted access. Because of the censorship, China has established internet rules and protocols relative to preserving their costs. This leads to global compliance because in some ways, the global Lexus has to agree to its terms. U.S. internet companies like Yahoo and Google make their services available all over the world, but in China, those services are restricted. Just recently, the Chinese government restricted access to Google altogether after a government representative accused Google of spreading pornography. They have to bend over in order to fit in the Chinese platform. Second, stricter police on user surveillance are installed. The China has a very big population and therefore has a lot of online users who dominate the virtual world. There are agents who investigate individuals who post information online that may be offensive to Chinese government and officials. Information may include rumors or state secrets, as well as material that brings down Chinese morale and its reputation. Lastly, both publishing and viewing online material are greatly affected. One example are reporters without borders who have accused that China's policies prevented an earlier warning about the COVID-19 pandemic. At least one doctor suspected as early as December 25, 2019 that an outbreak was occurring, but arguably may have been deterred from informing the media due to harsh punishment for whistleblowers. The restricted access to posting and viewing data has led to problems like information miscarriage or misinformation to arise. Thus, in conclusion, this censorship, 
The very same one that brings cultural peace is also most likely the reason why it's hard for the global Lexus to coexist with that of China's. China's Great Firewall has a strong impact on Chinese economy while maintaining its own culture and heritage. Since China is the world's most populous nation, they have used this as the leverage to empower their own products and services. According to the Asian Link Business, about 632 million internet users, China is the fastest growing and largest e-commerce in the world. China's e-commerce revenues are expected to account for up to 3.2% of the country's global domestic product compared to 2.7% in the U.S. This suggests that internet censorship makes China's economy superior to other nations. Also, because of the Great Firewall, Chinese consumers buy their own country's staple and imposed products. Instead of moving to a faraway company, local transactions hold the resources in their area and growing the welfare of their people around them. Moreover, the media helps in preserving their culture as the government of China blocks all the social networking sites which might cause cultural diffusion. Yahoo, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Netflix, and many more are the social networking sites that they block. Instead of accessing these social networking sites, they create new social networking sites that have the same feature to those social networking sites that they have blocked. For example, Sina Webu. China's most popular microblogging site and can be considered a combination of Twitter and Facebook. Agreeing with Thomas Friedman, finding a balance between the global axis and the other three is one of the constant struggles in today's world. In order for them to be sewn together in a complex system, there might be a need for a compromise on either or both sides. The real test then is whether a compromisation on how will we will learn to strike the right balance between the inherently empowering and humanizing aspects of globalization and its inherently disempowering and dehumanizing aspects will be feasible or not.